is the founder of SpaceX and he has created this global communication system called Starlink, which is initially a constellation of satellites orbiting the Earth in a low orbit to provide worldwide internet connectivity, particularly in remote areas. These satellites are going to be launched 500 kilometres up and they're going to be seen from every corner of the globe. So no matter where you are, you're at least going to see at least three to five of these satellites at a time. They're being sent up in bursts of 60 and six to eight of these bursts are needed for the internet to be up and running. In total, 12,000 are going to be sent up but we're looking at another 42,000 in the future. So a few nights ago, I went out to photograph this Starlink trail. And initially I was looking to photograph a train of them going across the sky, but I didn't get my camera settings right quick enough and they were gone like that. I did get, however, this photo of one of the satellites moving across the sky. Now this is an eight second exposure of one of the satellites moving across the sky. That is why its path is so short. Now from this image, you can clearly see it is very, very bright in the sky and very visible. I can tell you from going out three nights ago and watching the train that they are bright, they are visible and obvious. They were going through famous deep sky objects such as the Pinwheel Galaxy, Bode's Galaxy and Cigar Galaxy. So basically primarily through the plough, they were cutting off all of those objects. So if any of you guys were out imaging that night, you would have had to have scrubbed a quarter, maybe half of your imaging session. So us astronomers are quite used to having to scrub maybe five or six of our subs in an imaging session before stacking due to satellite obstruction. However, this is going to be 12,000 more of those satellites in the night sky. Therefore, it is much more likely that we're gonna have to scrub a lot more of our subs. Second reason is we already have 5,000 satellites up in Earth's orbit and we only use 2,000 of them. However, this is leading into a positive of the Starlink satellites. The satellites are claimed to have a lifespan of one to five years. And when that lifespan is finished, um, they deorbit, so they come out of their orbit around Earth and they burn up using their ion engines in the Earth's atmosphere. So no debris is coming back down to Earth, which is big five stars, that's awesome. This is obviously dissimilar to other satellites that are in orbit that are there and the majority of them, 3,000 of them, aren't working or being used and they haven't got those ion engines to be able to deorbit. So that's one really, really neat thing about SpaceX satellites. They're not going to be um, polluting Earth's atmosphere. So as a lot of you guys will probably already know, this isn't going to be the last 12,000 or 42,000, however many, Elon Musk is going to settle on in the end. This isn't going to be the last 12,000 going up into the Earth's atmosphere. Other companies are chipping in now wanting to create their worldwide networks for people um, in remote areas to be able to access. I haven't done enough research into these companies and I don't know whether they're going to go along the same lines as Elon Musk is and their um, satellites are going to burn up in the Earth's atmosphere and not cause pollution of any kind. I'm not sure whether they're going to do that. If they are, fantastic. But while they're up there, it is obviously going to be an obstruction to astronomers again. However, they are only a couple of negatives that I addressed there and there are a couple of positives including the ion engine one. The second positive is all the money going towards the network is going towards Martian missions. So missions to Mars, we're using the moon as a stepping stone to then launch from the moon to go to Mars. I think this is absolutely incredible as it opens up a lot more opportunities to find other life um, other than us in the solar system. I think this is a great way, really, really efficient way to use the money from um, the Starlink satellites. And I think this was really well thought out. Obviously, I have very mixed opinions on this topic. And primarily the negative is it might ruin some uni projects, not the whole thing, just a few subs in a uni project and a few more subs of our astro images. And it is quite weird to think that when we um, look up in the night sky, maybe in a year, six months time, we are always gonna be able to see moving objects around us. 
it is quite scary and it is going to be quite difficult to work our imaging sessions around this time and around the orbital plane of the satellites but I'm going to do my best it's not going to stop me loving this hobby and also the launches are pretty cool Overall, I do think we will adjust and adapt to what is going to be a fully techno techno te technology. <laughs> I did enjoy having a bash at photographing one of the satellites. I thought it was quite weird that I was really hoping that a satellite would go through my frame. That is the one and only time you will ever hear me say that. Anywhere else on this channel, I will be complaining to you guys about satellites going through my frames. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got something out of it. Again, let me know your opinions down in the comments below. I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Let's get a discussion going. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, happy stargazing, stay safe and clear skies wherever you are.